let's discuss some of the important studies in the adjuvant treatment of gastric cancer. So you had the uh, ACTS, which was primarily a Japanese study, which included patients who had undergone or gastric adenocarcinomas who had undergone a minimum of D2 resection. And post-operatively, these patients are randomized to receive either nothing or the uh, placebo versus one year of S1. Now, the S1 is a drug which is a pro-drug of 5-fluorouracil, and it's a combination of three drugs. It's basically Tegafer, uh, Gimeracil, and Oteracil. Uh, the, whole, the whole premise of using this combination was that it was more efficacious and less toxic as compared to either capecitabine or 5-fluorouracil. The maximum studies of S1 have been done in Japan. And in Japan, this drug is a standard of care for GE junction cancers, gastric cancers, breast, as well as colon. There is very minimal data of S1 in Europe and in India. In fact, whatever studies have been done in Europe have shown that the classical dose of 40 milligram per meter square twice a day, which is used in Japan, is very poorly tolerated with a lot of myelosuppression and diarrhea. And therefore, a, drug, a dose standardization of drug is very important before we start to use it. The reason I mention this is because this drug is now available in India, and we are still a little hesitant in using it at the doses that has been prescribed in, the, in Japan. So this study showed a significant improvement by the addition of S1. You can see the all-patient five-year overall survival being 72% in the S1 arm versus 61% in the uh, placebo arm. The next study was the CLASSIC trial, which is a Korean study, uh, which again evaluated patients of gastric adenocarcinomas who had undergone a D2 resection to either six months of capecitabine and oxaliplatin or eight cycles of Kpox or versus no treatment. And uh, here again, you see that there is a significant improvement by the addition of Kpox to these patients. The five-year OS is 78% versus 69%. So I think apart from the fact that the adjuvant therapy has shown to help, what is remarkable is the difference in the survival of patients in the uh, Eastern population as compared to the West. It's, in some situations, it's almost double. So therefore, for gastric adenocarcinomas, perioperative flot is a preferred way of treating. Uh, for those patients uh, where surgery has been performed upfront without new adjuvant therapy, adjuvant therapy may be considered if the surgery is a D2 resection, the adjuvant therapy uh, can be classic regimen, that is eight cycles of Kpox. However, if the surgery is less than D2, it might be an option to consider adjuvant chemo radiation in this setting based on the data from the McDonald regimen. For G junction and uh, esophageal adenocarcinomas, you have the option of perioperative chemotherapy, similar to the FLOT regimen, or new adjuvant chemo radiation that is as per the uh, cross regimen with aclicarbo and uh, radiation. Both of these are reasonable uh, choices. And the patient selections depend on patient characterizations, the tumor, the local expert expertise, and several other factors. Um, some, some more uh, personalization of treatment can be uh, identified based on some of these studies that have recently come up. So uh, the data from the MAGIC study has been evaluated based on the MSI positivity. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the group of patients who had MSI high tumors and received chemotherapy and surgery did not do well. So there is a message in what this slide explains in that if you have an early gastric cancer and the patient is MSI high, I would probably avoid using new adjuvant chemotherapy in that patient and consider the patient for upfront surgery and consider chemotherapy only in the adjuvant setting as per the histology. So uh, in the past, we never had the ability to test for MSI, but today MSI testing is done routinely and this must be kept in mind to evaluate biomarkers initially at the start of treatment itself. So another uh, evaluation was in again from the MAGIC trial where they evaluated what the survival was based on the response to the initial chemotherapy. So on your left is data from the MAGIC study. And here they showed that patients who did not have a good response and those who had a TRG of three, four, five and were node positive as the arrow shows, did extremely poor. So those patients who had a good response and were no negative did ex extremely well. Similarly, those patients who had 
uh, a good pathological response was still were node positive, continued to do well, but those patients who had a poor pathological response and remained node positive uh, did fare very poorly. So this, is, uh, this, this slide helps us in identifying a group of patients who have undergone perioperative therapy and who will have uh, the risk of an early recurrence. Similarly, if you look at this slide on the right, this is data from uh, the CTRT or the new adjuvant uh, cross phase regimen. You see that patients who do not have a histopathological complete response fare very poorly. And so how, what, what exactly can be done to improve the prognosis or the outcome of these patients who do not achieve a complete pathological response? And uh, this is where some data from the Checkmate 577 uh, has come just last year. So in this study, patients with stage 2 and 3 uh, G junction adenocarcinomas or squamous cell carcinomas who had residual pathological dis disease after a neoadjuvant CTRT regimen, so similar to the cross regimen, these patients were randomized to either placebo or to receive nivolumab initially as 240 milligrams every two weeks and then 480 milligrams every four weeks for a period of one year. The primary endpoint in this study was the DFS and secondary endpoints were the overall survival. So in the Checkmate 577, about 40% uh, of patients were G-junction tumors and 60 were lower esophagus. 71% of patients were adenocarcinoma and 29% were squamous carcinomas. There was a significant improvement in the median DFS, almost doubling from 11 to 22. And the uh, median PFS2 was not reached in the nivolumab arm, indicating a significant improvement with the use of nivolumab in this prognostically poor group of patients who have residual disease after neoadjuvant chemoradiation. If you see the forest plot, there are some other important points that we need to see. One is that the, uh, the, the quantum of benefit is probably more for esophagus than for GE junction. And similarly, it is uh, probably more for the squamous as compared to the adenocarcinoma. Now, these are interim results. We are still av awaiting the overall survival, uh, but, but the DFS was a primary endpoint. And as part of that, this study did meet its objectives. Again, no CPS or PDL1 testing was required for identification of patients. But as you can see, the PDL1 expression of less than five, uh, the confidence interval crossed the line of unity. So the Checkmate uh, 577 is a new standard of care in patients who have resected GE junction tumors and lower esophagus tumors and who have residual pathological disease after receiving new adjuvant chemotherapy. So what about biomarker testing in this group of patients? Now, in advanced disease, we have well-established biomarkers. So you have the HER2 positive disease, and these patients respond extremely well with uh, trastuzumab. And now, based on the DESTINY trial, you have the uh, trastuzumab deruxtecan, which has shown extremely impressive uh, disease-free survival and uh, overall survival in this group of patients. Similarly, in patients who are MSI, which at a clinical, a practical level are about three to five percent of patients, you have high response rate and long survivors uh, with, with the use of PDL1 inhibitors. Once again, in patients who've got a high PDL1 positive tumors, uh, pembrolizumab as well as nivolumab have been approved in the use of G junction lower esophagus, as well as gastric tumors. There are also certain investigational markers. For example, the FGFR2 uh, amplification as well as uh, immunohistory positivity. So in, this is a group of patients uh, who tend to respond with a drug known as bimarutoximab. So these are some of the drugs that are being used in the metastatic space. They are inclusion now. Uh, they are now being included more in the uh, perioperative and the new adjuvant uh, area. These are some of the landmark trials that are ongoing. So this is just the picture forward. All these drugs, for example, trastuzumab, pertuzumab, uh, the VEGF targeted therapies like bevacizumab and ramucirumab are all being used in the neoadjuvant setting. Similarly, the Keynote and the Iconic uh, trial have been using uh, pembrolizumab and ebolumab uh, in the neoadjuvant setting. So this is an interesting space. And I would think that with the use of these drugs upfront, uh, we would be able to improve the survival of our patients with GE junction and stomach cancer. Treatments.